All right, let's see if I can make something here that is of any use for you that are watching. Self-realization is the realization of the presence of presence, is the realization of there is awareness of awareness. Suddenly, awareness is realized to be that which is aware. <clears throat> That awareness is never changing. It doesn't have any need. It's not moving. It's not looking for anything. It's just his, his presence. It's kind of you unbound from the identification with thought. And, and sometimes with that realization, there is a realization and then there is re-identification with thought and there is suffering because suffering is appearing in duality. So it's as if you start to realize there is a bandwidth of silence that is ever present and on top of it, <laughs> that's the first, like, just the first little step. There are thoughts that are turbulent. And when you are engaging the thought, you feel the turbulence of those thoughts. And when you are disengaged from the thought, there is awareness of thought and you stay as awareness, presence. Turbulence can't stick because there is no place to stick because presence is open, spacious, wide. It has no attribute. It doesn't resist anything. And when you start to reside in presence, the turbulent emotion they um, they die in it, they, they rest in it, they melt in it. And that presence is unconditional love. So it is the aspect of unconditional love that is already inside you, in you, that is you, your being, but that may not be realized. And when it is realized, there is this, ah, oh, oh, there is awareness of thoughts. There is awareness of emotion. And there is a de-identification with being that. It's like you start to realize your identity, your true identity is not a thought and is not an emotion. So when I, if I have the thought I'm not there yet, because many people have that thought when they start to be intuitively called to know more about awakening and they're looking for information and hearing the thought that is saying i'm not there yet is just a thought and you are there is awareness of that thought so so you cannot get there because you are already there the only thing that is happening is that you're leaving there with the thought i'm not there yet that's why it's a realization. It's not an attainment. It's not an achievement. And it's not personal. Awareness is not personal. That's the other aspect of the realization is you we personalize thing and life and event when we adopt thought. Thought is the mode of experience that makes it seem as if we are separate because of language and these concepts that we are going somewhere, that there is something to attain, that there is time, that in time something will happen. And if I practice more, I will get there. All of these are the concept of time and space appear with thinking. And when there is no thinking, there is awareness. And awareness is always ever present. It's hidden in plain sight. There is awareness of the sound of my voice in this moment. This awareness is effortless. There is awareness of the sight, what is seen. There is no middle man in between. There is no, I see this. That's the construct of mind. So the matrix is not out there. The matrix is thought. Thoughts is a filter that makes it seem 
as if there is separation, as if there is separation from God, from love, from oneness, from abundance, because thought are the realm of effort. It's the belief, it's the belief that we have to effort to be, but we already are. There is no effort required to be. Once you start to, to realize that, you start to rest more in effortless being. And you are taking on some rides still in the mind. And there's nothing wrong with these. It's when we adopt thought that this is wrong. Then it's another ride on top of a ride. So there is no path because the realization is always now. It's always here. It can never be lost. But there is a seeming path of integration of that for that to penetrate being on the dimension of time and space on the relative level in our human experience, it appears that there will be more and more clarity and that takes time. So when I start to speak about abundance consciousness, miracle consciousness and effortless living, it will require some clearing of falsity or ignorance because if there is still fear, shame in your system, there is a lack of self-love and a lack of self-trust and there is no separation. Life is only re a reflection of your inner state so there is no inner and outside the outside will reflect your inside when i speak on the relative level let's say i speak about my partner and i say i am allowing now he is allowed like if i say i used to i used to want to help him and that was in the way of his well-being because i was preventing him of feeling what he needs to feel so that he can grow. Flip all of that. It's as if I'm talking about myself. Because inside, that's what happened. I was always thinking I need to help myself. I needed help. Like I was identified with this idea. And as I switch my, to my true identity, allowing this energy that feels I need to be helped, by listening to it and allowing it, it supported my growth on the relative level. So if I speak about someone, you can even hear it as, I, as if I speak about myself. We only speak about ourselves. We only reflect on the outside what's inside. And outside is reflecting what's inside as well. So if I have a lack of self-trust, self-trust, if I have self-judgment, then I am blocked. My creative energy is blocked. How can I live in abundance if I believe that I have to make all kinds of effort to be good enough? Effortless awareness is our nature and it's already non-effort. So living from that place is learning to relax the muscle of effort. That takes time in the dream. <laughs> And inner work is a path to accelerate that, to reveal what is in what is unconscious and keeping me bound in thinking that I have to earn anything. Life is already is neutral. It's not good and it's not bad. But if you if you so if you live in a sense of self-judgment, there will be lack in some aspect of your life it may be in the aspect of work in the aspect of physical health or in the aspect of relationship if you overstress yourself your body will become tired if you overexert yourself because you feel you need to do more and more and more the physical body will be tired so it's to balance all aspects from a space of receiving knowing that you are loved by life, by God, 
And that God is inside yourself. That aspect of you is already inside yourself. It's waiting to be revealed, to be known directly, to be open. And if you open that aspect of unconditional love for your shame, for your fear, you're already functioning from the divine aspect of you, from this open, spacious beingness. And that's the divine power that will accelerate the dissolution of me, the dissolution of the personal, the illusion of the personal consciousness, because personal consciousness is an illusion that is taking us on in, on a, an impression of making all kinds of effort and things are not right and I have to make them better. It's the loss of that that is the liberation is knowing everything is already perfect. There's nothing to find. There's nothing to gain. There is nothing to lose. And there's this blissful, blissful peace of non-attachment, non-expectation. is like you, you start to taste life fully, like it's it's indescri indescribable but you you may have to do some inner work to get there even if i tell you there's nowhere to get and you can drop all your belief at once sometimes it takes time to retrieve our investment in mind and the tool to reveal what's in what's unconsciously believe are a great efficient way to be able to allow abundance in your life. Because if I say like, start to live from abundance consciousness and you have self-hate or a lack of self-trust, it's not going to work. You, We have to do it somatically because these are in our cellular, at a cellular level in the body. There is a belief that I am, an unconscious belief I had this belief after after self-realization, I still carried the belief I am a failure. I had to really fully reveal it and feel it, feel the this eight that was still inside myself. That was a, a reflection of a, an energy that had never been expressed. This rage I had for my dad which I love so so much now and I I always loved I always loved my dad but this rage that I felt when he was abandoning me for drinking I couldn't understand at four three or four years old why would my dad do this why would he leave me why didn't he love me I couldn't understand that, that he was suffering. I couldn't, I couldn't understand that, that innocent child didn't know that. So there was rage and hate for my dad inside myself that I couldn't express because I, I, it would mean like I wouldn't survive this. So this is still on the level of the story on the relative level, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong to do this inner work. If you're still compelled to believe thought, if you're still suffering, it doesn't mean that it's wrong to do this. So the inner work, revealing belief, letting go, loving all the shame, like I love my shame, I love my anger, being to that place where there is no more doubt, self-doubt, self-hate, that's what is allowing abundance to come in your life because you remove the block. And as you remove the block, you start to know what you want or what your heart wants. And you start to create from the heart because there is no more need for the me. The me is surrendered, totally surrendered. It's not in the way anymore. So that means there is still this total normal life of the person it's really ordinary it doesn't feel you know it doesn't feel like anything like the mind might project it's not an it's not a an experience of no self it's just effortless living 
effortless living and trust that in every moment there is wisdom and intuition and every moment is met with that and there is also integrity and discernment the reflection is ongoing but it's not an effort is so i learn all the time everything that penetrate my field now is Anything that resonates for me, that resonates for growth, for enjoyment. And I st- I'm on a continuous, I'm a continuous, continually learning. Sorry about the language. So the journey is ongoing in the non journey. While there is resting in the non journey, the journey is ongoing. That's the richness. That's the fruit. That's the fruit of, of, of the realization. So the so the, the removal of block is still occurring in myself. And the more there is self-honesty and earnestness and willingness, the more you will be supported in finding what you need and it's it's magical. So I won't be able to separate self-realization from abundance consciousness because they are the same thing in real in reality. Is the there is um like the belief in unworthiness is is a conditioned belief, and there is a a lack of trust in life that comes with belief. The belief in we have to make a lot of effort, but God is already abundant. Life is already abundant. We were never meant to, well, I don't know what we were meant to, but it's a mistaken identification when we identify with the mind and we believe that life is hard, work is hard, that we're not enough. Everyone is already perfect. Everyone is an expression of God. Everything is an expression of infinite. Everything is the infinite being. Life is already infinite potentiality. It's always infinite potentiality. That is never lost. So when we lose ourselves in the thinking realm, we forget ourselves. We forget our nature. We fall asleep to this. And waking up is, is gradually... There is less and less investment in those beliefs. And there is less and less suffering until at some point, there is no fear of fear. There is no fear. That's pure freedom. That's So as long as there is fear, there is a lack of self-trust and self-love. So do the inner work until it's ongoing without effort. All right, so that's it for today. I hope this makes it a little bit clearer about the self-realization, the no path and the path. (laughs) Embrace it all. Okay, bye-bye.